Welcome to the weekend preview here for Los Lomitos Racehorse. It is the weekend of November 13th and 14th. Uh, the 14th on Sunday, we'll have, tri- we'll have trials for the C. Wayne Griffin, which are trials essentially for the champion of champions. But we're going to take a look at Saturday's program, and uh, specifically the Tame Race program, which features the Dream a Secret Overnight Handicap in race number 10. Pleased to be joined by Mike Rona. Before we dive into the race preview for this week, Michael, what a tremendous late surge there. In the Super Derby by flashback there and that very good, nice win. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Both horses showed up yes. big time. The, the two headline horses, they're both brilliant athletes. They're just so exciting to watch and such a contrast in their styles. Yes. And uh, it just came up uh, that flashback was that little bit too strong at the end of that particular distance. And, uh, gee, he saves his best for Los Al, and he's now a dual derby winner, the Winter Derby and the Super Derby. Congratulations to the Connections. Absolutely exhilarating contest. Yeah, what a tremendous performance by uh, April Echo Patty, despite once again acting up in the game, Michael. Once again, we've seen this antic before, but despite all that, she ran a tremendous performance. It was actually pretty cool to see that these two duked it out in the 2 million fraternity when they're two-year-olds. A political patty was able to hold off flashback way back as a two year old, but now flashback turned the tables in the super derby and earns a provision of birth into the champion of champions. So, uh, lots of lots of things to look forward to in the next uh month, month and a half to complete the, the season here at Lausanne. Uh, but tonight, uh, on this Saturday, we got ten, a 10 race program. Michael, uh, what race are you gonna want to take a look at? I'm going straight to the feature at the end of the 10 race card. The uh, Dreamer Secret Stakes for two-year-olds at 350 yards. And uh, it's a good race. It seems to go through the Valentin Zamudio barn because he trains the top two on Ed Burgart's morning line. I'm going to pick the one at the slightly longer odds. The second choice, Beduino Surprise, number two. Beduino Surprise there? I I thought that was going to be an interesting race as far as uh, the morning line. And it's kind of going to play out. I have the early pass performances here on the screen. These don't have the morning line odds just yet. Uh, but th- we have an invader who uh, coming in from out of state who has run a pretty good resume up to this point, and that is Runaway Witch. But you're going to focus on Benino Surprise. I want to bring up this replay. It's not going to tell us much as far as the regard to this field, but I think the main positive, he was number three horse this night, Benino Surprise was, Michael. And you got to like the gate speed he showed in this race, right? And it's consistent, reliable gate speed, Jose, which is a great attribute for a quarter horse to have. This was a trial to the uh, Golden State Million Futurity. Whiskey Glasses, who won the final, ends up winning this trial down the outside. But we know surprise weakening late for fourth. He had every chance. This is not some kind of trouble-filled replay that we're showing you. But it's good company that he was in. And he was stepping up sharply. Uh, he came off a three-month layoff to win a, a very sharp performance, 110-yard race. Then he was stepping right up to the 400 yards of that futurity mile. So, he, and he'd never gone that distance before. So I don't think it was any disgrace for him to run out of steam in the closing stages. I like the fact that he has won his only previous start at this 350-yard distance, and that was in his third career start. He's now in his third race of this current cycle. He, he was very precocious, Jose. He debuted from the rail mm-hmm. in uh, a kindergarten futurity trial, got into the final and placed in the final, and, and then he won his third start. He's only run at the 350 yards. And I love his consistent early speed. This distance looks better for him than the 400 yards last time, back into an allowance race tonight. And uh, he, he just checks a lot of boxes for me. Obviously, that other Zamudio horse that Ed Burgart has made the morning line favourite is a scary new face coming in from the Intermountain regions where, theoretically, he, he might have a five for six career record because yes. he was disqualified from the win in each of his first two races. That's pretty remarkable. He still won three of six, though. Yeah, since then, she's kind of lived up to the form despite getting disqualified. She's won 
three of the last four. The resume speaks for itself. I would have liked to see a local workout, Michael, and maybe you maybe you know maybe that that's that's something that's kind of staying keeping me away from the six. But no doubt that the resume speaks by itself. Interesting that Ribble Lozano, the main go-to rider for Valentino Murillo, he sticks on the two. So that that's probably yeah. got to make you feel a little bit better as well, right? It does. It definitely does. You raise two excellent points. No local workout for the new shooter. And I suppose it's logical that Lozano would ride Beduino Surprise because he's been on board for each of the horse's six starts. He knows the horse and uh, the, the other horse is new on the scene. Still, Lozano is Zamudio's number one rider. And theoretically, you would assume he, he would have had the option to jump off and try this other horse. So uh, I just think that a lot points in the favour of Beduino Surprise. And I think he'll give you a great run for your money. I think three to one is quite a reasonable price to take. All right, Michael, you're going with Beduino Surprise in race number 10 on Saturday night. Uh, best of luck with that selection, and thanks for coming on and jumping on with us on this webcast. Always a pleasure, uh, regardless of where I might be at any given time. Last week, I was reporting from the Del Mar Press Box. Tonight, uh, or this afternoon, as we record on a Thursday, I'm ensconced in a, a very nice suite in Las Vegas that, uh, that my wife got for free. Free in quotations, I <laughs> say. You always got to... Put those quotations around uh, the the freebies that you get here. <laughs> hey, I, I might follow suit. I want to be in Vegas too, so I might I might uh, be out there in a, in the next couple of weeks. But enjoy. Uh, thanks for us. Thanks so much for jumping on, and we'll see you out at Los Al this weekend. Good on you, mate. Hooroo. See ya. Horse racing fans, the fun and excitement of horse racing is always at Los Alamitos. We're open daily for simulcasting, and our live quarter horse and thoroughbred meet continues every Saturday and Sunday night. And sports fans, make Burgarts at Los Alamitos a big part of your Sundays as our new sports bar and wagering room now features the NFL Sunday Ticket. Root on your favorite football team, plus cheer on your favorite racehorse at Burgart. Plus, we're continuing to offer our popular $10,000 Pick 6 promo. With the NFL Sunday Ticket now at Bogarts, we look forward to seeing you at Los Alamitos. Happy to welcome. Welcome now, Christopher Wade, your Los Alamitos analyst there through the simulcast signal, bringing you to insight from uh, for every race from the paddock. Uh, Chris, welcome back to the program. We just uh, talked to uh, Michael Runner briefly. He gave us a selection for the nightcap. So to close out the late pick four, I believe you're taking us to the start of the late pick four. Yeah, we sure are. We're going to take a look at the six horse in tonight's seventh event. Second time back over the track there and going to Christopher O'Dell's barn. Uh, the, uh, the six horse, a sign of good candy. Uh, this horse uh, has always showed a good amount of ability, ran some nice races at uh, Rio Dosa Downs and shipped him and had a stack of trouble in that uh, return effort there uh, 28 nights ago. Yeah, the, let's take a look at that replay. We'll bring you this replay courtesy of LosLibnos.com where you can uh, quickly and easily uh, watch a replay by date and uh, you bring up here. Uh, this is going to be a trial for the Super Derby, uh, race number seven, October 16th. And I believe... Um, a sign of a candy was the number three horse, right? Yeah, post number three. All right, what did you see this night, Chris? Well, the horse is getting a little antsy inside the gate, broke a little bit slow, and back bobbled and was bumped back and crossed by quicker horses. I gave this horse like a length and three quarters trouble at the very least, possibly two lengths. Was kind of slow in the stride, was under a hand shove pretty much throughout, but was really striding out strong and getting close to the wire despite being close quarters. And with everything factored in, the horse's figure was very impressive. And uh, at this allowance level, uh, this horse got a big look here in tonight's uh, seventh event there at uh, five to two on the program. First time for uh, Christopher Odell. So I give this horse a big look with hopefully just a, a decent getaway gives this horse a big chance. And, you know, you know, you analyzing that replay went to only be beaten about a length after all that, you know, after not having a comfortable trip, uh, you know, despite all that. That's a pretty solid effort because you're only beating about a length to the likes of a dangerous flash and a political patty who came back to finish second in the final. So, uh, and also a positive is that a sign of good candy uh, got the, the, got a sharp win here in October of last year in the allowance spot. So it's not like he hasn't uh, proven himself um, in this spot. Who do you think is the main threat to a sign of good candy? Is it the outside horse, backer at attack? Yeah, backer at attack. The horse comes out of a very strong uh, uh, stakes race and had a little, got a little fractious and bobbled and skied, lost about a half a length. It was finishing pretty well in close quarters in the wire, but uh, – how we'll have a clear path on that outside with a, a typical getaway horse has a big look here to be probably the one to beat. But I think with a, a decent start, a sign of good candy has a big chance to be that horse. 
Yeah, that, that's going to be race number seven. That is the start of the late pick four on Saturday night. That's an allowance event. So Chris is going with uh, the number six horse, a sign of good candy, who was laid at right around five to two in Ed Burgard's morning line. That is a look there at the past performances. You can get the night lines uh, digitally if you can't get them on track or at your uh, favorite uh, satellite wagering location. You can get the digital edition of the night lines program. Uh, Loslimitos.com is a place to be. Speaking of night lines, what other tracks are you handicapping? handicapping for the night lights program this week well we got uh races three through 11 at lone star park and then we got uh, races five through eight at uh evangeline and our numbers of evangeline are starting to come around uh, those horses were off a little while and uh like numbers are starting to come around with those horses after having a start or two of the track all right chris thanks so much for everything we'll see you out of the south all right you have a good night boss see you Racing fans, the traditional $2 pick six at Los Alamitos is always a great bet. On Sunday, August 1st, a one-night carryover of $14,000 led to an outstanding total pool of over $132,000. And the payouts are tremendous, highlighted by a season-high payout of over $94,000 on May 21st. And remember, on Sunday nights when there's not a carryover, Los Alamitos will add $10,000 to the pick six pool. Talk about some good old-fashioned pick six excitement at Los Alamitos. The traditional $2 pick six, a great bet, a great deal. It's happening at Los Alamitos. Welcome back. Now joined by Orlando Gutierrez here for, uh, live from Los Alamitos. Uh, where exactly are you stationed here today? Well, if you can kind of see the windows behind me, Jose, that's actually the paddock viewing area. So that's a pretty busy place. I know when you were coming to the racetrack, uh, you know, many years ago as a, you know, as a young man, younger man, uh, that's a place that you used to spend a lot yeah. of time kind of checking out the horses, uh, getting to know the trainers, you know, and the jockeys. Exactly, exactly. Uh, as the horses are getting saddled. And it's a very popular uh, spot for the fans to congregate and, and uh, watch the horses get get ready, you know, before they go on the racetrack to warm up uh, to for the for the race that evening. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm, I have a bedding window right here in front of me, uh, some of the, uh, the light telling uh, stations across the way from me. And I'm just sitting here nice and uh, nice and comfortable. Uh, looking forward to uh, talking to you about tonight's racing action. Yeah, that, that's a good spot for the fans to enjoy. It's covered, so even if we have some rain, some of those nights where it gets colder outside and it's rain, it is a covered uh, area to go in and watch the horses as they get ready and saddled to head out to the racetrack. So uh, before we get into this uh, Saturday night program with the 10 race uh, card, why don't we recap uh, that tremendous finish in, in the Super Derby last week, Orlando? It was a sensational race, and a, it was such a super clean race as well. Every horse broke nicely. They all stay in the racing lane. These are some three-year-olds that are, you know, maturing, getting uh, closer to their older age season, and you can see by the way they perform, just a nice break, uh, superb way running down the lane, and just an exciting, exciting finish with an outstanding winner of the race, flashback, winning the Los Alamitos Super Derby, Jose. Yeah, let's take a look at the drone shot from my view here, a, a, a new view uh, we've been using here at LaSalle, thanks to, to our operators there from Pegasus. Let's take a look at the drone shot here of the Super Derby. Racing. A political paddy, not that well away, cleanly enough, but not the fastest early. Counting the ways is going fast. A political paddy, quick to shoot forward. It's a political paddy heading, counting the ways. Flashback fall out down the outside. A political paddy with a point to prove. Flashback bearing down and flashback grabbed her. Flashback. That was cool, Orlando. Super Derby, a nice uh, sky-high view there. I thought it was very cool that we saw these two specific runners duke it out once again. In the two-year-old season, it was a political patty holding off Flashback in the two million. Now Flashback turned the tables. To me, it looked like Flashback was not going to get there. For, but somehow, some way, in the last 50 yards or so, he just found an extra gear to be able to catch that that uh, that uh, that filly in the end. Yeah, the way that uh, the apolitical patty left the gate it was like how she had been breaking late last season and early yeah. this year she jumped to a nice nice lead and uh, flashback you know it was about two lengths behind yes. uh at, at least a length and a half behind and oscar peinado said that uh he wasn't worried because he knew that the horses finishes pretty strongly and about 50 to 60 yards that's when the horse really turned it on and talk about making up ground in a hurry to get to the uh, to get to the wire first and get that big victory, uh, flashback moving on now with a presumptive berth 
to the champion of champions thanks to that big win, Jose. He kind of showed that same late surge on trial side when ca catching counting the ways. Counting the ways look gone. And same thing, flashback in the final yards. He found that extra gear and surged late there. So a tremendous performance. Congratulations to Jaime Gomez and his ownership there. Uh, they get a, a, a presumptive berth into the champion of champions, which is coming up in about, what, a month and a week? Maybe if that, exactly. about a month. December 11th. December 11th. Oh, we're actually uh, as a recording. The show. Hey, yeah. yeah, it's exactly a month away. A month away mm -hmm. for the champion of champions. All right. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, some more news about the champion of champions as we get through the program. But let's kick it off here on this 10 race program on Saturday night. And why don't we kick it off with the, uh, uh, you know, we saw a good thoroughbred, thoroughbred allowance race uh, about a week or week and a half ago. A little bit of a preview. We have another strong one here in race number four. So why don't we kick off the by talking about race number four, Orlando? And that is going to be a thousand yard allowance, and they're going for a purse of nearly over twenty one thousand and a very good field here. How about the eleven year old Orlando? Just the Mitch, still winning races and winning him by comfortable margins as an as an eleven year old. Yeah, just on that page right there, we see that he's had a win by two lengths. He's had a win by four lengths. And in his ass out, was a one by, one by five lengths. And look at the way he opened up. I mean, he opened up like if he was a political patty in a quarter horse race, you know, by two and a half lengths and just continued to just get strong. Uh, was facing claimers last time out. But the way that, you know, horses showed a lot of speed and just opened up, it's going to make it pretty tough for the other horses in this race. And you mentioned that allowance race a few, uh, few weeks ago, which was just a tremendous group of runners. There is... Let's see, one, two, three, four, I believe four uh, that are coming off, off of that race yes. that are going to be in action here. We got Run Factor, Prince Ali, Hot and Famous, and Silver Win. All of them, you know, still with a chance to get to the top 10 spot to run in that $50,000 final on November 27th. And, uh, and it will be a heck of a, heck of a way to uh, kind of see if they get there because this yeah. might be their last opportunity to get into a top 10 spot. Uh, and again, horses with the 10 most money earned uh, will get a berth into that uh, $50,000 final. It is a quarter horse preferred race for this one. But outside of that, if uh, outside of that, the, these thoroughbreds with the most amount of points get to uh, get to have an opportunity to run for a big, big purse. Well, the bad news for Justin Mitch Orlando is that there's a lot of speed in this field, a lot of speed. So this is going to be a, a, a terrific way to end up uh, that that only pick four on Saturday night. But you were able to catch up with someone about uh, about their horse in this spot. Is that correct? Yeah, I had an opportunity to talk to Angela Aquino about uh, a great horse by the name of Run Factor, who uh, we've seen him, you know, put together some really nice races. He was part of that outstanding race uh, that was won by Capture of the Sea over Castlegate and O'Jerry. Uh, this horse showed a little bit of speed in that race from the outside post, post number nine. I think moving to post one is going to help this horse show more speed because we see that on the on the uh, PPs right there, how much speed he does have. One of those horses that will give uh, just a Mitch a pretty good early run. Let's talk to Angie Aquino talking about her five-year-old gray run factor. We're here with trainer Angela Aquino and Angela Run Factor has been an outstanding runner for you all season long. He's right there fighting for a spot in the $50,000 final at a thousand yards. You know, give it my race this weekend. How do you see the horse coming into this one? Um, I actually see him really strong. Um, he really tried last time. He's a, got a huge heart. He always tries no matter what, you know, even no matter where I put this horse, he gives a hundred percent. That's why I love him. He's like a barn favorite and he's everybody's favorite gets treats, everybody comes by and visits him. He's, he's a character, Mr. Personality. But yeah, hopefully if we can, you know, get him in this weekend for Saturday night and he can he can do good. But it was just a lot of speed. He's a total speed horse. So if he doesn't get that lead, it kind of breaks his heart a little bit. But if we can, you know, if he can get out on the lead, usually he keeps going. Now, looking ahead at that $50,000 final, there's also a $30,000 race as well, which uh, he would really fit perfectly right especially with his level of speed yes yeah so i mean i think he would be very tough in the thirty thousand. just a little notch he's just quite not as nice as those top top horses and he gives 100 percent, but he's just one notch below those horses yeah just another level of strategy right where yeah. he's gonna end up running yeah okay best of luck thank you he loves to be near the lead he does his best when he's able to open up a clear lead with you know without a lot of pressure 
he might not be able to do that here because there's a ton of other speed. But probably the inside post is where he wants to be to be able yeah. to take advantage, right? I think that that's kind of a big key for run factor. And uh, Hot and Famous, who was the horse that we saw give uh, O'Jerry so much trouble yes. in that last race. I mean, he made O'Jerry really work hard for the lead in the uh, in the early going, kind of opened up the opportunity for Capture the Sea and Castlegate to kind of catch him at the end there. Uh, run factor is going to go going to be inside of Hot and Famous this time around. So Hot and Famous once again is is he going to be the one applying all that pressure to our uh, Run Factor? For the uh, you know the first half of the race, maybe in, in, in just a Mitch is just right there yes. as well. You know, does that open it up for a closer uh, in the late stages of this one thousand yard race? I still haven't made up my mind about how I'm going to tackle this race as far as as far as uh, handicapping and pick fours, Orlando. Because if Hot and Famous shows the same speed that he showed to apply Old Jerry the speed, he might clear, yeah. right? Yeah, and if he if he doesn't, then he's probably gonna have a good stalking trip pressing run factor, but then who knows what Justin Mitch is gonna do? It's just a very interesting puzzle as far as who's gonna be on the front end and who's gonna be applying pressure. Uh, and don't forget Silver Wind. They took the blinkers off last time out, Orlando. He didn't fire. They are adding the blinkers back on. Uh, so I think that might might kind of tip a little bit of a uh, Silver Wind showing more speed, but. I, I, this is going to be a very challenging race as far as figuring out who's going to be on, on the front end. And just more speed as far as just finding a good stocking position yeah. because it's going to be very tough for from post number seven for this horse to want to get involved, uh, especially with all that speed. I mean, you have Prince Ali right between uh, Run Factor and Hot and Famous, and Prince Ali can also flash some early speed as well. So you got the first four horses that, you know, it'll be really interesting to see who gets the jump out of the gate and uh, finds himself in a good position to kind of set the tone for this race. And then you have the three outside horses, Terrible Ted, Count Tolstoy, and Silverwind, maybe looking just to kind of get into a strategic position and um, to strike late. It is going to be an interesting puzzle there, without a doubt, in race number four, the closeout leg of that early pick four on Saturday night. All right, let's skip ahead. That's That was the, the closing leg of the early pick four. Let's skip ahead to the first leg of the late pick four in race number seven on Saturday night. We briefly talked uh, with Christopher Wade about this race and this spot, uh, 350 yards. And some of these run, run, uh, runners, excuse me, Orlando, are coming out of some tough trials. Uh, we have a good mix of runners that are kind of exiting allowance events or, or stepping out of trials. Chris gave us a look at, good look at a sign of good candy with that replay. But what do you think about backward attack? And also, what do you think about the Lone Star Shipper, uh, Just a Famous Habit? Well, for backward attack, uh, you know, I really like the way this horse ran in the uh, PCQHRA British Derby. I'm making him my top choice in this race. Uh, you know, it, it's not like he got into uh, a lot of early, early trouble. He actually broke pretty solidly. Yeah. But was losing ground before making kind of like a rally late in that race and finished third. Uh, against some pretty good quality runners there. So uh, drawing from the outside post, I think, has an opportunity to once again, you know, flash that late kick that he uh, he's always pretty much has had. We see every single time this horse, you know, other than like that one race that we have uh, back on what, Governor's Cup Derby, when yep. facing some good horses, this horse has not really lost too much ground in the final, you know, 50, 100 yards of his races. So I think he's going to do really nice in this race. And uh, you mentioned the uh, the Lone Star Shipper coming off of a nice victory. You know, it's one of those things. Can, you know, how is he going to act under the lights? Yeah. You know, we've seen quite a few horses that look really good on paper. But for whatever reason, you know, they might not fly out of the gate. You know, there are more kind of horses that are getting there late. So it'll be interesting to see uh, just a famous habit, a horse that doesn't have a lot of quick quickness just leaving the gate does. Uh, in, for, in his first out here at Losa. Yeah, you know, Becker attack really impressed me to begin the season. He began with back-to-back -back wins. He did it from the outside post. Uh, I, I believe I picked him on top that night. We're counting the ways. Ended up winning. Barry Colossal finished second. Mm -hmm. But throughout his 2021 season, he's looked like a brand-new three-year-old. And he, like you mentioned, he seems like a runner that just keeps finding late in the race. He's not really losing ground. He's kind of finishing yeah. well. So, that outside post should be a good spot to be. Uh, just a famous habit. Interesting that they added the flipping halter last time out, and that led to a win. 
and he's wearing the flipping halter here tonight for a high percentage barn. So that's the only thing that is kind of catching my attention. Uh, but I think the, the local runners have a little bit of an advantage. We talked about a sign of good candy with Chris. Uh, the other runner that's probably going to take some money is High High Hopes Orlando for Paul Jones. Good win two starts ago. Troubled, uh, troubled start last time out. But that third place finish I thought was better than luck. He was still finding a little bit of energy late. But the top two were were well clear when, once the race was uh, through the halfway point. Yeah, he's a pretty game horse. You know, will give you everything he's got. Pretty consistent overall. You know, another one of those horses that just doesn't have that brilliant speed out of the gate. So that kind of, you know, it all depends on how, you know, how strong he can finish and how the other horses, how far are they ahead of him. But you know he's going to give you a really solid effort all the way around. You know, I kind of like Miss KO a little bit as well. Uh, this, this mare you know, can, ha can have some speed, has done some nice races in the past, coming off of, a, you know, a solid third-place finish against some pretty quick horses, f famous Cartel Jess, and we saw Goldstring 650 last week uh, win at 110 yards in one of the fastest times we've ever seen at that distance here. <laughs> <Yeah>. And uh, <laughs> Miss K.O. ran a, you know, a pretty good race yeah. with a pretty solid time, uh, 1786 that last time out. And in her 300-yard races, she's always also had some good times uh, as well. So I, I like Miss KO, Erasmo Gasca coming off of a nice uh, stakes win last week uh, as well. You know, that, that great big smile that he had in the winner's circle yes. after winning the stakes race last week. You know, he's feeling pretty good uh, right now. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to seeing him hook up with Miss KO and, uh, you know, getting a nice break and see how the mayor goes against these uh, good, good three year olds, little good three year olds here. The interviews from the barn area from Professor G oh, yeah. come in clutch. I mean, by this point, they just see your face in the barn area, Orlando. There's a line forming. People are lining up because everybody, <laughs> everybody you interview, it's come through. Around Logaska, what was his odds? Like 30-something to one, 20-something to That's one? That's right. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the longest shot of, in that race. Yeah. In he, the town policy. Yeah. And it was it was one of those horses that the breeder was always there from the family. Yeah. He said, that's your fire. I'm a fearless hero. He just had not been like, he had not put it together up to this point. Yeah. Uh, but once again, outside post clean trip and around Mogaska and the professor G interviews coming through once again on the, on the weekend preview show there or as Mogaska will have miss KO at race number seven, race number eight, final uh, pick three opportunity on Saturday night, uh, conditional claimers going to a uh, distance of 300 yards. To me, this race, Orlando, if it's not Branch Ricky, it's wide open, right? Because if it's not Branch Ricky, I think you could start digging and making a case for everybody else. So are you all in on the class dropping Branch Ricky, or do you think there's other options here in this spot? I'm actually not picking Branch Ricky in one of my top three I spots. I like this. I like now, this, wait, Orlando. Yeah, but but you like that because when I do that, it hasn't paid off, you know, the last couple of weeks that I've done that. But, uh, when but it, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. You know, I got to stay with, uh, yeah. with what, you know, what I think is my yeah. system, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to go actually with uh, he's a he's a can uh, dandy candy okay. in this race. Uh, like the four to one odds in this one, I'm going to throw out that last that last effort when uh, we can see by the uh, by the comments was just eliminated a start in uh, in a race that included a, a disqualification of a horse yep. uh, moved up to a so I'll forget that one um, I like that second place finish before that and you know I just like the way that this horse has shown a little bit of speed leaving the gate and there's my man again Erasmo Gasca hooking up with them again Jose Flores that good combination that won last week in the town policy and again I'll go for a little bit of a price play in a nicely well drawn spot. He's a can. He's a dandy candy. Will be my top choice in this one. I, I, in my night in the nightlines, I went uh, Branch Ricky, and then I went Aquatic, and he's a dandy candy. So Aquatic to me might be the main main thread in this spot. I went back to look at a fifth place finish two starts ago against uh, Dash a Good Reason. FG just says mm -hmm. that wasn't too bad of an effort. I know it's a fifth place finish, been in three lengths, but it wasn't a terrible effort from gate two. I I think if she has the you know, she can somehow break cleanly enough, not fast enough, but just clean enough. I think she'll be right there. Diego Herrera knows her well to this point. Uh, and then he's at Dandy Candy, like you mentioned. That was a that was a pretty solid effort. Finished uh, uh, about half a length in front of Selena Blue in that common event back on September 19th. Valentina Budio has two runners, the inside two. 
the one tends to move inwards, so I'm kind of worried about that inside post for him, Orlando. Mm -hmm. Selena Blue looked impressive, but was bent down heavily. Was supposed to win that 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 race easily, and she took care of business. So I feel like this is a a little bit of a tricky race. If it's not Branch Ricky, it could really open it up to someone else. So are you going to your system, Orlando? <laughs> chuck chuck Brand, Branch Ricky out of the top three. Try to get an upset. Yeah, and the other horse that I kind of like as well is Barbet. Uh, just because of that nice effort, I'm hoping that it's a sign of things to come for Barbet. You did mention that the horse ducked in at the start, uh, last out. Uh, you know, but it came from post number three. The one time that he did break from post number one, it wasn't his greatest effort. But we've seen two good efforts since then, so I'm hoping, again, that it's a, it's a good sign and maybe he's kind of figured it out. Uh, Ruben Lozano, Valentin Zamudio, one of the top combinations here at Los Al. And again, a nice prize, 7-2. Yeah, I think if you just cross out the first two starts and you focus on the last two, then you see that progression. And that might be a sign that he's heading the right way. I don't know if he was gelding between May and August, but maybe that was a sign that, you know, he took another step forward. I think it was, actually. Yeah, so that, yeah, that might have... Because we, we talked to Valentin Zamudio uh, for the Spanish version of the uh, of the preview show. And I think that was uh, the horse had just been gelded uh, for that August 21 start. So that, that might be the sign where he really took another step forward and and and, and is now improving. So a tricky race there in the, la in the last, uh, to begin the final pick three, race number eight, conditional claimers for attack of $10,000. There's two races left. You know what time it is. Late double time, races nine and 10. How about this? Race number nine, Orlando. How big of a field that we got? We got a field of seven in this spot. 300 yards. Who did you end up picking on top in this race? You know, in this race, I went with Boogie's best dream. Uh, just like the way this horse has the ability to perform. We've seen some nice efforts from this one. The one uh, sixth place finish came in a trial to the Golden State Million Futurity set for the Stars of Corona. Uh, it wasn't the toughest trial of the night, but it was still, you know, some really good horses in there. Uh, and the horse just, you know, never did it, just didn't really fire. Uh, it wasn't supposed to fire. It was a big price, 27.01. I think this horse fits nicely in this group. And, uh, you know, again, I'm looking for a good price, 9.02, Boogie's best dream. If you want to talk about breeding lines, Orlando, look at this field. Let's go top to bottom, up for it, right? On the damn side, on seems up. Yep. Uh, 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 Governor's Cup Futurity winning mare. She produced a Governor's Cup. Governor's Cup Futurity winner this year mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Cozy Fire, not much there, but you talk about Moonlight Corona. There's Nomadic in Circle City. There's Boogie Fires. Is this from J Fire Up? J Fire Up. Yep, J yep. Fire Up. I mean, Blues Girl, too, <laughs> right? World uh, champion, champion, world champion. champions winner, two yep. million winner. Another Exceller. This is from the family of uh, Chance to Excel. Chance to Excel, the Edbrook Million winner. And the blues girl, uh, the blues girl as well from Chicxulub, uh, tracing back to Corona Cartel. So you're talking about breeding lines in this field. Uh, there's a lot of potential. Uh, so you go to uh, Boogie's Best Dream. I went to Roundabout. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't take off that uh, made in the plum off of my head. She, he was, it looked like he just took it to another level, and then he got into a much trouble start on May 30th. Layoff. I think he might be coming around to a good spot. He's three to one. He's my top pick. Uh, I went three, five, six, four in that order. So uh, maybe a little bit of lean to roundabout, but I could I could also see Blues Girl two, excuse me, Blues Girl favorite, uh, finally getting a clean trip under Cruz the second time off the layoff. Orlando, were you directing a horror movie in the background? Because it, <laughs> it sounded like it was a horror movie about to happen. No, it was uh, Jim Porep, who's actually the pilot uh, of the drone. All those drone shots are uh, shot by, you know, with Jim, uh, Jim Porep as the pilot. Uh, he's the head, head man at Pegasus Communications. He's actually up to, uh, you know, another one of his of his uh, engineering tricks back there. Okay. He was he was moving a lift. So I don't know what he's got in store, but I'm sure it's going to be good for the fans uh, watching us on TVG, watching us over the satellite broadcast, because when he's on the grounds here at Los Al, that means that we're going to get some very cool shots uh, you know, on our TV broadcast feed.
It kind of sounded like you know when the bad guy chases with like a knife and it's like oh, that, yeah. that music they put. I kind of sounded like that. I, I was like, is Orlando directing a, a horror movie in the background? I mean, we already yeah. heard my dog running across <laughs> the house earlier today during the show. But no, that's that sounds cool. We got the great drone shot there of you uh, yeah. via Jim. So hopefully more things to come uh, during the production of the quarters. But you know, to get back to this race, we talked about the breeding lines. Breeding lines. I don't have a strong opinion. Uh, myself, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, roundabout, uh, but you can you can go a number of different ways in this spot. Yeah, I like roundabout as well. Uh, we saw this horse, uh, you know, with a lot of potential early on, and ran second in that maiden race for set against set for it, and then had that really good maiden win where he just took off one really easily. Uh, another horse that is coming off of a of a trial, but it, he's been off for a of a while. Uh, and did have a, a you know a decent comeback uh, workout 12-5 then another 12-4, uh, but we haven't seen them in a while. Maybe they give this horse a little bit of time to mature, to grow. We've seen those Moonlight Corona babies uh, that just get better and better. Uh, both Circle City and Nomadic became Derby winners uh, as three-year-olds. So roundabout now, getting closer to that three-year-old year. Maybe this horse has mature, and uh, you know we'll see we'll see what it, the horse has. We know he'll have some good speed. You know, these fly through the fires have shown a lot of quickness yeah. out of the gate. I like this horse. I made him my third choice in this race behind uh, Boogie's Best Dream and Seams Up. All right. One more question in this race. Where was that race from Chicks to Blues? I mean, was exactly. this, that was a, she had never broken as good as she did last time out. Can she repeat it, Orlando? And is, is that a sign to now watch that? All right. Now she's starting to figure things out. You know, thirty-two to one. You know, if, if she can repeat that, that'd be a, that'd be amazing. Uh, you know, sometimes these horses just take a little bit of time to uh, to mature. She did have that nice third place finish three outings ago. Then uh, you know, just had a pretty pretty poor uh, leaving the gate, poor effort leaving the gate when it hit the gate, and then comes out and just has this great great race, uh, winning by a half a length. Rodrigo up, winning at thirty-two to one. You know, I she was one horse that had me scratching my head. Should yes. I put her in my top three or not? I ended up not doing it. Um, you know, I, I like to see her repeat and have another top two effort before I'm all in on her. This time I'll go ahead and play against her. But, you know, she could make me pay. And you know what was tough about that night is that she ended up dead heated for the win. So all those players that had her, yeah, that was the start of the late pick four. Actually, no, the start of the pick six carryover. I remember that mm -hmm. night. And she, yeah. she ended up dead heating with the favorite. So it completely, like, it was a elimination yeah. type of race where it didn't even count. Like, if you had her, it was like a tough beat there. But that was a big turnaround in form for, for her that night at 32 to 1. All right, let's head out to the to the featured event of the evening, the Dream of Secret Overnight Handicap, 350 yards. 70,000 is a purse. Uh, good form from uh, plenty of these uh, runners in this spot. But the morning I favorite is going to be the Invader, Runaway Witch, Orlando. Uh, we just uh, went by Halloween, Runaway Witch, trying to make uh, her, her presence felt here in Los Al. <laughs> Three for six overall, and already has a maturity win on her resume. Yeah, so Runaway Dash, this horse ran here at Los Alamitos, if I remember correctly. Uh, the Sire. Yeah, right? So yeah, Runaway I mean, Dash, the Sire yeah, was here so. for a while. Yeah. And now... Um, you know, coming off of a nice second place finish, Runaway Witch in the La Fiesta Futurity, $250,000 race. And this horse was the winner of the Bitterroot Futurity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that race is very influential when we're talking Wild West Futurity times yes. here at Los Al. Uh, of course, have that Bitterroot Futurity being held at Pocatello Downs. So uh, Runaway Witch, like you mentioned, uh, coming off the Red Hot Horse, has uh, three victories from six starts, over $100,000 earned. But I'm gonna go with another horse. Orlando, this. this is this is where I take over your system. Runaway yeah. Witch, not even in my top three, Orlando. Wow. Not even in my top three. Wow. Wow. So I'm gonna try to beat the six. Who did who did you like here? Well, I'm going with the inside horses, Jose. I'm going with the two Beduino surprise. I like this horse's ability uh late. It's had some really nice efforts where the horse just explodes late. And also the one women's secrets. Horse that's been super consistent here at Los Al. With we saw we saw him win the Los Alamitos claiming futurity. We saw him qualify to the PCQHRA Breeders Futurity and run fourth in the final. 
super close to finishing in the top three in that race. I'm going to go with the local faces. Number one, Women's Secret. Number two, Beduino Surprise. All right. Uh, you were able to catch up with a few connections from this race. So let's go top to bottom. Let's go inside, outside. First up, Women's Secret. You talked about this is one of the horses you like, Orlando. Uh, what what a pretty cool story, right? You This horse was uh, one, the, the Los Alamitos Claiming Futurity was claimed out of there and then was able to make the finals of the PC Creature Ray Breeze Futurity. And the pretty cool story is how the horse got into the PCQHRA Breeders Futurity Trials. The uh, connections didn't even know that the horse was uh, eligible <laughs> yes. to the race. And it's probably because, you know, you get used to seeing all the icons that we feature in the Nightlines program where we show you if the horse is eligible to the Golden State Million, yes. the Los Alto Million, the Oaks, the Super Derby. Well, we don't have an icon for the PCQHRA Breeders Futurity so I kind of caught the uh, the connections by surprise when they found out that this horse, hey, we can run him in a trial race. So here's Roman Figueroa talking to us about Women's Secrets. I had an owner call me and said he wanted uh, a shot at him. And so we put in our claim and it was a eight-way shake. And we were fortunate enough to get plucked out and was able to be the new owner. <laughs> you paid $12,500 for this horse, but right into his next race, he was in the trials of the PCQHRA Breeders' Futurity. He qualifies, runs in the final. Tell me how that went. Well, to begin with, we were really unaware that he was even in the, in the, in the Breeders' Futurity trial, uh, eligible for it. And uh, my agent actually said, are we going to run your horse in the trials? And I said, no. I said, he's not paid up in anything. And, uh, and he says, no, he's on the list. I said, you're kidding me. <laughs> So uh, I called the owner and uh, he said, what do, you, what do you think? I said, well, the horse is doing really good right now. I said, he's worth a sh you know, take a shot at the, you know, he's already uh, nominated. And so he said, okay, if you think so, we'll try it. And so we did and was uh, lucky enough to get uh, run third in our trial and qualified. He was a 10th qualifier and he seems to be getting better at every time we started. This little stake come up, so we thought we'd put him in this and see, uh, see how we're doing. and. Go from there see how he keeps going yeah definitely one of the claims of the season so far the way he's he's already performed how do you see the uh, dream of secret coming in i i like him i like uh we've got to put the one post but it's a very tough race but uh any stake here we run in in la salle you're gonna hook up it's a pretty tough one so but uh i think he'll really be good he's, he's doing good and uh, a little bit of luck and maybe we'll get some of that Thank you to Roman Figueroa for talking about women's secrets. So a couple of things, right? They claimed this one out of the final in a, what, an eight-way shake or something like yeah. that, Orlando? Yeah, right. that was a big win as it was for them. Yeah, so they won the shake. So they got themselves a 12-5 claimer, uh, a 12-5 claimer. They find out they're eligible for the PC H, uh, HRA uh, Futurity Trials. They pay the extra fee. And they essentially, for 12-5, they got themselves a Futurity finalist. Right for twelve five, and not only that, they come back and run a good fourth. They're only beating about half uh, about a length, and they earn a nice purse. So uh, all in all, this has turned out to be a very successful claim. Absolutely, they that fourth place finish was worth twenty one thousand dollars, and now they have a horse that's running in a in a stakes race here at Los South for a seventeen thousand dollar purse, and the connections have paid this horse into the El Primero del Año Derby for next year as well. So, uh, it's a, you know, it's a great claim for No Econo, Roman Figueroa. And, you know, that's kind of the beauty about the uh, claiming futurity uh, here at Los Al, where you can find some hidden gem gems out there. But the one thing about Women's Secrets is that this horse did show us some ability early on in the season. So they probably always had an eye on this horse. But, man, this horse has really been quite a fine for the connections. And now we get to see this horse participate in a few more stakes races. And he broke his maiden from the row. So this should be this should be a problem given his gait speed and given his ability to win from the row. Moving down the line, we talked about Beniso Beduna Surprise. Mark Corona liked that one in our preview. Uh gait speed cut back in distance looks looks to be a tough contender. Racious Kit Tracks uh had been racing in Wyoming, Orlando. Seems to not be the fastest out of the gate, but can finish. Uh was probably gonna be uh, right there, kind of vying for precision. Comes out of a second place finish in the Wild West Futurity Trials, uh, Futurity Finals, excuse me. And Jesus Ayala has now gotten to know this gelding in the last two starts. 
and and Jose Jesus Rios Ayala won with some prices last week. Yes. Remember? Uh -huh. And now he gets to ride this horse at eight to one odds. You're gonna get Jesus Rios Ayala on a horse that's had some pretty good efforts that ran second in the Wild West Futurity, and you're getting eight to one. Yeah, you know, he I'm won sure at what players think, will be uh, really excited to play this horse. I think Ayala was one of the reasons we had a big carryover a few weeks ago. He you know, keeps them winning at prices, which we we rarely see him win on prices. He's usually winning aboard favorites there, but he's gonna be aboard races kit tracks up the ladder. Uh, began the career in pretty good form, Orlando. And last time out, it wasn't as bad of an effort given the sluggish start. And, you know, he was only beating about half a length. Orlando, this is my top pick. Six to wow. one on up the ladder. I thought he could have been right there in the mix for the win with just a little bit more of a lucky start. A little bit more uh, luck at the start. He would he should have been right there in my eyes. So I, I, I like up the ladder at a price. Where is he going to be after the first 100 yards? He's going to be... In third, third, uh, third about about down a neck, not not too far for that. Actually, pretty close to what he was last time out. So if he's right there, I think he could finish. I think if he's able to keep a straight path, he'll be in the mix of things. Uh, that, you were able to also, yeah, I, I like him at a price. So moving down the line, Flash of Corona. Are you gonna get? Do you think Rodrigo is gonna be five to one at post time aboard Flash of Corona? I think that's probably a fair uh, a fair you know, odds for this horse just because there's, you know, the two horses on the inside. If you're going to make uh, up the ladder your top pick on TVG, he's going to get some play. Yes. Uh, and then you got Runaway Witch on the outside of uh, of Flash and Corona as well. So, you know, I think five to one might be, a, you know, might be a fair price for this horse. Uh, we had an opportunity to talk to Pat Vischer about Flash and Corona. And Jose, the last time we talked to her about this horse, this horse won a race. So she was one of those that was happy to see us, uh, see the preview show come by her barn uh, once again. Let's see Just what. Uh, churning out money. Orlando's in yeah. the barn winning purses here and there. I mean, you have a line of people waiting for you at the barn now. And didn't you tell me that she was like, she was like, is this going to be good luck if you're in a viewer yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 And, and this time she told me you were good luck the last time. So <laughs> come on. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's, here's Pat Vischer talking about Flashing Corona. Flashing Corona, of course, that, uh, the last time we came and visited with you, we talked about Flashing Corona and the horse. What a nice race. How do you see him coming into the Corona Chick? Yeah, well, I think he's doing well. He's happy. He doesn't do, actually, he's like that all the time, so I can't say different. But he's doing well. He's not going backwards, so. I, I don't know. I want to find out what kind of horse he is in there because, you know, there's going to be some awful nice horses in there. So that's the way I look at it. Now, I you, just hope he runs good. And you bred this horse? Yes, I did. You kept them? I had, I'm thinking, I had like six horses, for, you know, and I sold them all but him. <laughs> I kept him because when he was born, he just was a nice looking individual. He looked like a racehorse already, you know? And then I just, I sold everything else I had. And this one I kept, cause I just, something about him, I just like about him. Maybe he's not that good, or maybe he is, I don't know. But I really like him. He remind me a lot of uh, that Pat's Charming guy I yeah. had. And he went about 150,000. So I'm thinking that if I get that lucky, you know? You've done well. Yeah, it'd be nice, but he does remind me a lot of him, you know, so, but that's basically why I kept him. He just always been a nice horse, and he's still a stallion, and never acts like a stallion, you know, he's a good boy, yeah. So we'll see if he's that good. That's what we're going to do. We'll certainly find out on Saturday. Either way, he's a special look. Yeah. Whatever he does, that's fine. Thanks to Pat Fisher. She had, I'm pretty sure she had a big smile walking back into the barn seeing you right there, Orlando. Uh, I like that she said that this is one of the only ones she kept, right? She sold yeah. pretty much the other, the other crowd, uh, the other like clash that she had alongside of him, but she kind of always liked this one from the beginning. She kept him. He's still a cold. All three starts, he's been right there. He's shown the ability to, to finish well. Yeah. And to me, it just looks like he's still learning, he's still improving, which is a good thing up to this point. Yeah, and you know, when I actually asked Pat Vischer, why did you keep this horse in particular? And, you know, and this is one thing that, uh, you know, you don't, we don't get to see often just how much uh, 
how special these horses are when you you know when you are around them quite a bit. Um, and she was just talking about all of the horses, you know, that she yeah. that, that, that she didn't keep, just mm -hmm. how much they meant. And you know, when I started when she, when she was talking about flashing Corona, she was actually I think thinking about her other horses, you know, that that she did sell. But you know, they mean so much to her. Uh, it was pretty cool just to see how much these uh, these horses, all of them, all of them mean to uh, to to her. So, you know, she just loves the horse. She thinks that you know he's got a interesting personality, a very cool personality. And like how she said in that in the interview, you know, no matter what she does, you know, it's all it's fine. You yeah. know, it's fine. That's my baby right there. Yeah, they're just she like you said, she's gonna find out what he's made of uh facing the suffer group on Saturday night. So let's end the end the, the last two. Runaway Witch, the invader. We talked about coming in from Albuquerque. Obviously, the good resumes there. Don't you find it interesting that Rubel Lozano ends up on the other one? And yeah. Not this one. That's that's very true. Yeah, that the, is the, very true. Yeah. So that, that might be I would have liked to see a local workout. There's not a published workout. Uh I would have liked to see one. So I'm going to go with the local runners in this spot, but no doubt that she she has shown talent up to this point and she's already a, a, a futurity winner as well. So she's uh she's the five to two morning line favorite on Ed Burke Arts morning line. Uh what about the outside runner? Budget budget buster, uh 10 to 1 on the morning line, the long shot for Henry Lopez and Scott Willoughby has hit the board in the last few starts. And this horse is coming off of a nice second place finish against just another commando. Uh, you know, a Philly that has really just continued to get better and better. Uh, her last few start that was a nice second place finish in the Aqualina handicap on October 23rd. Uh, that'd be interesting to see, you know, if, if uh, this horse maybe drops in price a little bit because, uh, he, you know, I, I think this horse is going to look good on the track, mm -hmm. and I think this horse has the ability to, uh, you know, to kind of keep up, especially from that outside post. And she's, you know, the last two times she's. She's had the outside post. She's run well. So it's, you know, it's not like she should be able to handle this outside post, no problem. And, uh, you know, her last two or three starts, uh, she's been kind of steadily improving. So she's 10 to 1. And that's uh, that's a field of seven set for Saturday night's Dream of Secret over a handicap in race number 10. So that's a look at Saturday's program, Orlando. We, uh, Sunday night, we'll have the Sea Wing Griffin trials, which are essentially trials for the champion of champions. Do you have any idea of how many trials we might get or what, what kind of horses might be running in that race? Absolutely. We got 19 horses Ooh. in the trials to the nice. Z Wayne Griffin uh, director's trials. Of course, the uh, top two get presented birth to the champion of champions. Maybe there's a third spot open. We'll have to wait and see. But for sure, top two get a presented birth. And I'll just read you some of the names. Um, well, maybe we'll read you all of them. Uh, we got Mr. Ricks, okay. H. H. Gelforce, a horse that uh, is a is a shipper, uh, lands in the barn of Valentin Zamudio. We got Stolen Lives, who's a stakes winner earlier this year. Constituent, yes, a horse that was outstanding early on, and we've seen him run some outstanding races in other world. Horse that has on a bit of a win streak here at Los Al has had some nice stakes wins here at Los Al, and uh, already out of those first five that I told you, three of them are from the barn of uh, Valentin Zamudio. Constituent another world, really first down, John Carter Cash, zooming for spots, going Ooh. for what would be a, a record uh, appearance in the Champion of Champions if he's able to get in once again, zooming for spots uh, in the Champion of Champions. We have the defending Champion of Champions winner, A Political Pants, uh, Candy Blood, an invader, KJ Mucho Macho Man, uh, is going to be running in the Z Wayne Trials. Mental Error, Doc Lamb, Bell Check, some familiar names, Cattell Cove. Then we got uh, Dr. Allred's uh, outstanding pair, Nomadic, and Circle City. Also, Chocolatito is in there as well. So we got Ooh. three of them from the uh, Willoughby Allred barn. And rounding out the group is Cartel Love. Now, Circle City already qualified to the uh, champion of champions, but we've seen some horses that use the Z Wing Griffin as kind of a warm up, yeah. you know, to run, you know, to, to, uh, before the champion of champions, and uh, sometimes it works pretty well. Like we've seen Zooming for Spuds do that a couple of times as well. So those are the 19 in the trials. It's going to be a heck of a night on Sunday here at Los Al and Jose. We did have a chance to talk to a couple of uh, trainers that have horses in these races. Jaime Gomez, 
Okay. After winning the, the uh, Super Derby with Flashback, he's got Doc Lamb in here. Uh, so we got a chance to talk to him. And Jesus Nunez as well uh, with Bell Check. So uh, how about we listen to uh, these top trainers talk about their horses in the Z-Wing? All right, let's show them back-to-back. Here's Jaime Gomez, followed by uh, Jesus Nunez, talking about their contenders for the Z-Wing trials. The horse came out now the other day for the Super Derby, and he ran pretty good in the end. He don't break the best. And uh, I think he got a chance to qualify. So I don't know how many birds. I don't know if it's two or three, but if, uh, if he breaks good, the horse got a really good chance to qualify. He's a really big horse and nice. And he's doing perfect right now. Talking about flashback, what a sensational effort in the Super Derby. How did he come back from those trials? And we can't wait to see him in the Champion of Champions. Well, the horse come back super good, you know, when the horse is, the horse is 100% right now. And, He's eating good and he don't have no more ulcers or nothing and the horse doing really, really nice. Thank God he come back good. Can't wait to see the champion of champions with flashback and a bunch of outstanding horses. Thanks, Jaime. Thank you, Conrando. He really needs the last race and this horse is kind of funny horse sometimes. He don't run for every rider, you know, but he's got some riders that can run pretty good. The horse feels good, you know, it's a tough feel, but we're going to try to see what happens, you know. And I hope we got better luck this time. Yeah, you'll be making a switch uh, with the jockey, which isn't surprising. I mean, that happens with a lot of horses that respond to certain riders a little bit better. And you got to find the one that kind of matches the best with your horse, right? Yeah, some horses are like that way. We have to find out who's the best rider for him, you know. I don't say the rider is their bad. It's of course. Just the horse, sometimes they don't. I don't know why, but they, yeah. that happens sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, best of luck uh, this Sunday. Bill check in the trials to the champion of champions. Thank you very much. All right, let's uh, let's recap. There's Jaime Gomez, Doc Lamb, uh, a runner that immediately showed talent when he made his uh, his first start way back when. Uh, he's trying to get into position and 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 hopefully earn one of those berths. So he's talented enough. Uh, he always gave always also gave us an update on on Super Derby winner flashback. He returns well. He's pointing towards the finals of the Champion of Champions. Uh, so the barn of Jaime Gomez looking looking good and ready to go. Um, Jesus Nunez talking about uh, Bell Check, a runner that has been competitive and you know throughout his career here in Los Al. Interesting that he, you know, the change of riders trying to get a rider that fits well. You know, horses get along with certain riders. Uh, so Bell Check looking to get back to top form there in the trials as well. Yeah, so he's actually going to go with Erasmo Gasca picking up the mound on Bell Check. And again, you know, he just said, you know, it's nothing against the. The, the jockey that rode him before is just that, you know, we got to yeah. try something different, you know, and that happens quite a bit. Um, you know, we'll give Erasmo a chance here to maybe see how, what he can do. And Belchek will start from post number one in race number 10 here on uh, Sunday night for the uh, trials to the champion of champions. All right. So looking forward to those trials. Like you said, two are spots available. They might be three, but, uh, you know, we'll, uh, two, two of those will try to make it into the finals. And uh, we're just, uh, what, a, exactly a month away, right? A month away from the Champion of Champions. Yeah, December 11th is the final. Looking forward to it uh, and looking forward to those trials as well. So uh, by this time next week, we'll be talking about 2 million trials. Two million. Orlando, the year's flying by, Orlando. Next Absolutely. week, we'll be talking about 2 million trials here in Los Al. And then those fi that final for the 2 million will be in the same weekend as the Champion of Champions. And Absolutely. The 2 million. So can't wait. Looking forward to it. Nonstop action here at Los Alamitos Racecourse. Orlando, thanks so much for all the insight and all the interviews. I'm pretty sure the connections are lining up for you when they see you in the barn area because when you, when you get to the barn area, they're giving us winning interviews. Thanks so much. And, uh, again, I'm so fortunate that the, uh, that the connections welcome me uh, whenever we get there. And, you know, they, they know that we're doing it for the fans. So uh, happy to do that as well. Thanks for all the fans watching both the English version and the Spanish version as well. We'll catch you here next week. Thanks so much. Talk to you later, Jose. Night Racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos Racecourse with the biggest pools of the entire season. Check out these numbers in the Los Alamitos Early Pick 4. On July 18th, the pool was over $207,000. On July 25th, it was over $188,000. And the Late Pick 4 pools are tremendous with over $168,000 on July 31st and more than $152,000 on July 25th. Plus, don't forget about our $10,000 Pick 6 promo on eligible Sundays as the total pool continues to rise each time. Night Racing's best bets, Saturday and Sunday nights. Play them all at Los Alamitos.